Noriyaku Kano's model identifies several types of requirements that impact customer satisfaction. Known as the Kano model or the Kano model, it prioritizes requirements, value-added activities, and models the voice of the customer. Here is a detailed view of the Kano model, which has five requirements. We will discuss four of them in detail, which are basic, performance, attractive, and reverse requirements. Take note of the X and Y axis having fulfilled and unfulfilled versus satisfaction and dissatisfaction. We will also add note that fulfilled and unfulfilled can be replaced with implemented or not implemented. The basic requirements. The customer assumes they will be there. And when they are not, the customer becomes very dissatisfied. Such requirements are generally unspoken. These requirements cause dissatisfaction when the requirement is missing. As these requirements are fulfilled or implemented, it has little effect on customer satisfaction. Basic needs like car tires, laptops and coffee, an iPhone, that backup camera on your car, a hotel bed, virtual calls, CarPlay, yep, CarPlay is becoming basic, electricity, a battery in your car, some of Maslow hierarchy of needs, running water and plumbing. Yeah, I think we know that these are all basic needs and must be's and should be unspoken. Performance requirements. The customer expects a certain level of fulfillment and anything exceeding that level increases satisfaction to a point. Such requirements are generally spoken and determined by classic research methods, marketing research, including segment research and demographic research. Examples of performance requirements are salary, large enough and quantity of city parks, AIML to a point, uh, also efficient energy sources, drone activities as well and what they're able to do. And notice what I have is satisfied and fully implemented on the x-axis leading to it being at a higher performance. We'll discuss more about reverse requirements later as some of these could be reverse requirements. Attractive requirements are those requirements when present increase satisfaction, but their absence does not cause dissatisfaction. Look at the curve on the Kano model to the left here. Notice how the curve increases and increases satisfaction. But if you don't have it at all, it doesn't go below the dissatisfaction line. What's attractive now? iOS updates, software updates to your car, the infrastructure for electric charging in your community. Um, I'd also say that having AR with your glasses as an update as well as uh, and it's an attractive requirement. Backup cameras and CarPlay were once attractive, but are now basic. But do your own research. Don't take my word for dogma. And you'll find that CarPlay is becoming a go, no go decision in car purchases. Reverse requirements, just like attractive requirements and basic requirements, reverse requirements are unspoken. These are features the customer does not want and whose presence causes dissatisfaction. I'd also say that they don't want them to a certain level. Having one or two occasions of reverse requirements versus having several occasions of the reverse requirements makes a difference between satisfaction and dissatisfaction. A few small cracks in the road are okay, but many cracks or large ones are not okay. More and larger are worse and create dissatisfaction in this case. Being late one time may be okay with the customer, but a number of times is not okay. More is worse, causes dissatisfaction. AIML may be a performance requirement for some market segments and demographics, but others could consider it a reverse requirement where more is worse and creates dissatisfaction when fully implemented. 
the more and larger it gets with AIML for some demographics and market segments, the worse the situation becomes. Customers could be bored, have heightened requirements over time, but more or less requirements do change over time. One word that summarizes that is ennui, a feeling of listlessness and dissatisfaction arising from a lack of occupation and excitement, which could affect how your customers view your requirements over time. Branching off of ennui, we should ask ourselves, how does time affect the Kano model? Over time, those attractive items go to performance requirements, then to basic requirements. That 100% on-time delivery and AIML go from attractive to basic in 10 to 15 years. That backup camera and CarPlay went from attractive in 2015 to pretty much a basic requirement in present day. That attractive quality of a hotel or vacation home with an ocean and skyline view, at some point in the future, it could be replaced with an orbital view. Now, let's think about the cycle times as we go through the Kano model, the cycle time of going from attractive to performance to basic. You could also use this with product life cycles as well. Keep in mind that time has always moved requirements and products from attractive to basic needs, such as the washing machine from the 20s. Now the washing machine at the day is pretty much a basic need. Uh, product life cycles have gotten shorter, but also the velocity has increased as well. The speed at which it goes from attractive to basic, the speed at which product life cycles go from intro to growth to maturity to declining has significantly increased. And why is that? Look at the chart below where it shows increase in velocity and reasons that that's happened. Agile mindsets, the fourth industrial revolution, social media and fast fashion, omnipresent ecosystems with Amazon and Apple, chatbots and communications, and the uh, use of big data have all increased the velocity of product life cycles and the velocity within the Kana model of going from attractive to basic needs. And yesterday, it took 20 years to go from attractive to performance to basic. And now today, it could take five years or even a year to go from attractive to basic or to go from intro to declining in a product life cycle. As you can see here, with me walking through the park, one of my requirements was city parks. With that mentioned, you need to make sure that you do the market research, study the particular segment, study the demographics, review the historical information because one Kano model does not suit all. You'll have different Kano models for different demographics, different segments, and so forth. So with that mentioned, I hope you guys learned something today and I'll catch you later in the next video.